So what we're going to do today is a short video on what you can do to help your bike position over the uh, over the coming months uh, in preparation for next season. Hopefully you see some real gains in speed. Um, we obviously do a lot of bike fitting here and primarily we see people uh, uh, three weeks out from an A race desperately trying to a achieve a better position on the bike. That's not the time to, to, to improve your your aerodynamics or your comfort or, or, or your, your power uh, on, the, on the bike. It should be done months in advance. So autumn, early winter is a really good time to be getting in, getting a bike fit done. And then the, the rest of this content, the video, will be uh, what, what you can go away and then work on after a decent bike fit. Um, some strength and conditioning, some mobility exercises. And once you've sort of got all of that dialed in, you can then set specific sessions that really help hold position um, and uh, ultimately, ultimately improve your speed in your, in your next triathlon. So, so ultimately, um, we see people coming in here with £10,000 bikes and they've bought all kinds of different wheels and different helmets. And these are all fantastic ways of making yourself faster. Changing wheels might save you a few watts. You change your tyres, there's a few more watts. The pressure you run the tyres, that a few more. The helmet you're wearing, the skin suit you're wearing, it all adds up. Uh, we're, we're big fans of the marginal gains idea. However, your body position on the bike, and not just the position we can achieve for a few minutes in here, the position you can achieve over the course of 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, five hours, six hours um, for, for, for the Ironman athletes, that you can sustainably hold um, and, and reap the maximum gains from that is, is the biggest gain you will ever get. Uh, you, you are 70 to 80% of the drag on the bike. So um, the, what we're gonna discuss here will, will help you find long-term sustainable solutions to uh, re reducing that drag. So while this video is very much about what you can do to help enhance your own position, um, bike fitting technology is, is moving on all the time. Uh, one of the latest things over the last few years that we're seeing used more and more is high side the elbow rests. Um, it, it's a combination of you having the strength to hold the position, but also by, by, by using the high sided elbow rest, you can actually push out into, into the elbow rest, which brings the shoulder in at the same point. So it's a combination of pushing out at the, the elbow or pulling at the shoulder or a mixture of both that helps achieve that, that best position. It's certainly easier than, than having an old traditional um, uh, flat um, elbow rest. Uh, we use these from a, a British based brand called Kismet. Um, they're very, very high quality, very, very stiff, very comfortable, uh, different thicknesses of foam that, that go in there just to optimize the position perfectly. Um, so this alongside the, the exercise I'm about to show you uh, is the ideal way to reduce this frontal area. So the first exercise is um, going to be to do with holding a smaller silhouette to the wind. Um, we see in triathlon a lot of people coming out to swim already a bit tired in the upper body. The first thing on their mind isn't holding the, the most aerodynamic position. Uh, what, we, uh, what we inevitably see is people riding around in pretty un-aerodynamic positions like this while they get themselves settled and have a drink and whatever else they're doing at the start of the race. This is actually a, a big time where you can, you can get away from people. Uh, we always say out of sight is out of mind. So um, when you come out of water, your upper body might be pretty pumped, but we're actually going to use some different muscles here to what you'd, what you'd use to swim. Um, so along with having a reasonably good starting position, I would be straight into position and I'm, I'm using the traps only just behind my head to just pull the shoulders in. And you can see the reduction in frontal area there straight away. I can carry on getting myself sorted, take a drink if I need it, but the muscles I've just used to swim are also relaxed and I'm, I'm simply using these muscles here. With an awful lot of people, these just are simply aren't strong enough to hold this position for a long period of time and uh, that one very simple exercise can, uh, can correct that over winter. So this is the exercise for holding uh, a narrower shoulder position in the bars and it's a simply a shoulder shrug. You pull the shoulders up, hold up to five seconds, 
and release all the way back down. Back up. And an obvious advancement to this is to start to add some weight to, uh, to your hands as you do it. So it's a good exercise to add to your strength and condition in the gym this winter. So for this exercise, um, it obviously requires an awful lot of uh, strength in the neck. Some people even talk about eye strain, being able to look genuinely look forward from a safety point of view. Um, you have to have a sustainable neck position to hold the position that you've achieved in your bike fit out on the road in a race. It's no good having this amazing aerodynamic position during a bike fit or in a wind tunnel session or something if you actually can't hold that in the race. So we're always looking to fit people in, in very sustainable, achievable positions. Um, and then you obviously need the strength and conditioning in order to hold, hold the position. So we see a lot of people achieving this by, by the higher head position, which as I can see in the mirror that I'm using ahead of me, at least half my head is exposed to the wind here. Uh, what I'm trying to achieve is, is a lower head. Uh, several ways to do it, you know, I've obviously just slotted into position there. A lot of people find it's easier to learn by, by dropping the head down first into a low position, then starting to look forward. As soon as I do this, and I, I am a little bit out of shape at the moment, I'm feeling the strain in the back of my neck here. So I've not been riding in the aero position for a good few weeks. Um, we obviously need some exercises to strengthen the neck. So the second exercise is going to uh, enable you to have a stronger neck, to be able to hold a lower head position. Uh, really important to get the head down out of the wind when you when you try to ride fast. Um, it, it, the improvement in your CDA or aerodynamics is uh, is huge, taking the head out of the equation. So when we're talking about getting the, the head lower and the, the sustainability of the position and the strain in the neck, uh, we've got a really funny looking exercise called the quadruped neck press. Uh, you might want to do this in private, not in your gym. You look a little bit strange, but it, it works very well. So you you you're gonna use the the opposite side to where the hand is positioned to press. So you're pressing against the hand, hold for three seconds. You're doing the same on the other side. And then you're also going to do it from the back. So press back against the hand, really feel the strain from the front. And then also from the front, this is the one that people will laugh at you in the gym for. And then um, we, we will come on later in this video to some stretching to release the neck and the, 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 the traps um, after your bike session. This, this, this refers to a little bit of core strength required to hold a position. Um, certainly seeing an awful lot more riders ride in slightly higher positions at the front these days. A little bit more stretched out to achieve a lower overall position, uh, a realistic head position looking down the road like we've already touched on. Um, you, you can very easily see a difference in position if I bring my elbows all the way back here so that I'm, I'm, I'm higher here, I'm higher overall. I've actually swapped the helmet just to demonstrate how the helmet will sit better into the back. Whereas if I, if I, if I go further out the front, you can see how much I drop overall and the helmet sat in the back. And that is actually already a lot less strain on my neck. I can go even further out the front to demonstrate further. Probably a bit of overkill here, but what we're going to talk about is being able to hold a position with the arms further out front. Your core needs to do some work here, so you have to have your core lightly switched on, and we'll, we'll cover off an exercise that will help you hold this position. So the best way to work on that relevant core strength required in, in order to hold the position we were just looking at, um, you, you can use a normal plank and hold position. We quite like Swiss ball exercise. So um, on the knees, feet up behind. We'll show this from the side. Um, you, you roll out as far as you can go while maintain, really feel the core engage, hold position and roll back. And roll out, keep the head neutral, hold position. About three seconds is, is fine and roll back. You can really feel that engage the core under the arms I'm obviously over exaggerating the movement here to get the, the most benefit from it. Another thing you've really got to pay attention to, to to be able to put out good power in a aerodynamic position, especially as a triathlete, 
where your body's taking a, a big batter in from all the running is um, uh, really good mobility uh, and flexibility around the hip area. So uh, I try to cover this off with uh, two, two key exercises just on every day, normally in the evening when, when, when the TV's on. Um, the, first one, the first one being to just grab this foot and this knee and we're on my right leg and we're going to pull it in towards the left shoulder. We pull the knee in first and we pull the foot in a little bit more. It's early in the morning at the moment, so not very flexible at the moment. Keep squeezing the knee towards this shoulder here and then bring the foot round and you really feel a big stretch through the glutes. So as an alternative stretch to the previous one just shown, um, you can create this U shape with your legs sitting like this, think about a hurdler's position. And what we're actually gonna do is we, we start by going to the knee. If you can easily get to the knee, you start to work down the leg until you're right at the foot. Now, as I've already said, I'm not the most flexible right at the moment, so I'm probably mid, mid leg. And again, you feel the stretch through the glutes. Keep the body very square to where you're going. So really common stretch, obviously um, uh, hip flexors getting very tight from all the training that we do, uh, all the sitting that we do in our day jobs, driving cars. This is one that absolutely everybody that, that does sport should be doing. Um, the key here is, is, is not to, to start doing this, it's to, to keep this leg straight, to get the pelvis tilted into a slightly forward position so you start to feel the strain going down the down the quad right arm up with the right leg behind and then to and as you stretch up you can actually start to lean across slightly away from that side quick demonstration of how that looks from the front pelvis forward reach up and you start to just reach across. You feel the strain, you don't need to go too far. Hold the stretch. Don't be tempted to come forward as everyone does and stay neutral in the pelvis. Bit of a different take on a hamstring stretch as well. Um, you foot against the wall, hands on the wall, very straight, relaxed front leg. You sit back and then we're going, you, you tilt the pelvis away bum up towards the ceiling and you can really feel the strain through the hamstring. Just sit and hold that position. So after all these exercises, position holds, talking about getting a decent bike fit at the right time of year, you, you, um, you know, when, when are you going to practice all this? So our view with our athletes is that you, um, you should be practicing this a couple of times a week, but possibly not bringing it into your, maybe your very hardest sessions. Actually, sometimes your, your easier long rides, we see people, especially the way the weather is in the UK in the winter, doing easy long rides on Zwift. Some point to this, you can add some slight structure to the session, maybe 10 times three minutes of position hold. It means that rather than trying to add structure to easy rides for the sake of adding structure to, to those rides from a, a, a power point of view, we actually bring the structure in from a position holding point of view. Uh, we've got a big mirror in front of us here. Um, and this is a really good tool to have if you can, if you can have this on your turbo setup. Um, and um, yeah, 10 times three minutes can become eight times four, you know, to the point where actually you're holding a very, very good position for an hour. By, by next summer, holding it for two plus hours is, um, is, is easy. Mastering holding the position on the turbo, uh, I feel if you can do it on the turbo, you'll definitely be able to do it out on the road.